Thank you for joining us here today on Hill Country Happenings News Minutes. As you can see, I'm doing the News Minutes today from the Tanglefoot Trail. We have the brand new sign that's up here. Y'all should come by and look at it. Now, when they get the LED lights put in it, it'll be internally lit. And so at night, it will shine. Can't wait to see that. Design team did a great job on the on the sign. And later on in the program, we're going to be talking with them, and they're going to be explaining about how the sign will work and some other signs around town that you may have seen that they have done. Now, this week is Thanksgiving. There are lots of things that people are thankful for, and, and I personally am thankful for my family, for my church, and just being here in Mississippi, I love it. We have lots of traffic sounds behind us, which we have to deal with when we're outside. But another thing that we have here in New Albany is trains. Later on in the, in the, later on in the show, you're going to see a train that's going through town and a poem. We'll also talk with some of the merchants at Ecru. They had their downtown open house on Sunday. So did Pontotoc. We spoke with some of those residents. And we are just enjoying being outside and in front of the new sign. It looks great. Some other things that have been happening around town are the cleanups that have been happening at the Agape Clinic. President Trump is going to be flying into Tupelo on Tuesday. We hope to have a crew there so that we can bring you um, some footage of that next week. Also, the upcoming Christmas tree lighting, there's going to be a parade here in town. There are tons of open houses and there's just so much going on. On Sunday, November the 18th, the Smokehouse at Myrtle held their community dinner. Now, the food was free. You're welcome to come in and make your plate and sit and eat and fellowship and be with others. But all the donations that were given in lieu of the price of the plate is going to be given to a family in need for Christmas. As you can see, the plates were piled high on Sunday. There was lots of people there, and they were having such a great time fellowshipping. This is a wonderful cause that the Smokehouse is able to provide because of the help of the citizens of Myrtle and the surrounding areas. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You'll notice when we have all of our new programs. Be sure that you write down our email address and also we're going to give you our physical address so that you can send in letters or cards to any of the original shows that you see that you like for the Pat and Allen show and the Hill Country Horror show with Count E. Flack, the From the Heart show, Cindy Incidentally's, just a general overall what you think about the station. We would love to hear from you. We have got some new sponsors coming on, and we're excited about that. So you'll be seeing some of those later on in the station. And we hope you have a wonderful week. Hi, my name is Keith Pierce. I'm here today. We're with Design Team Sign Company. We've been in um, business since 94. We're very pleased to partner with the city of New Albany with our new signage for the Tanglefoot Trail. A couple of the other signs in the area that might be familiar to you, we've done the baseball park signs over at um, the Sportsplex with the baseball bats on them. That was around 2007. We installed all of the signs and awnings for the McAllister's Deli here. That was around 94. Since then, we've done a couple of remodels with them. We're very blessed to have 175 employees. We like to look at it as 175 families that depend on design team for a living. What we do, we'll take existing photos and then we'll impose graphics and get the general concept of what our customer is wanting. And generally, it probably takes um, three to four weeks from start to actual manufacture. We have to get all of the approval for all the permits and signage permits from the city. So three to four weeks usually.
Seth Pierce. I'm the general manager of the Rainy. I have worked here for a year and a month. So I come in right after they opened up. Um, and so I was a server um, and now I'm the, I'm the general manager, so. And that's a new position? Yes, um, I'm very excited about it. I am an elementary education major at Blue Mountain, so it's definitely a different role taking on the general manager, but luckily I have some experience um, from back home where I'm from in Martin, Tennessee. And so I'm really excited to uh, take the stuff that I learned there and bring it down here to Mississippi and apply it. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun. I got a great team behind me. Um, they do a great job from Chef Stevens, our executive chef in the back, to um, even our host, Caitlin, up here. Uh, we do a great job communicating and, and getting this going and keeping it um, up and going for our, our um, historic downtown New Albany area. Tell us your hours. So we are open Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, our bar opens up at 4.30. The kitchen opens up at 5. Appetizers are available those days. Um, and then we close at 9. And then we're open Friday and Saturday until 10 o'clock. Same thing with our bar. It opens up at 4.30. And the kitchen opens up at 5. So and come how in. do you stay open? 10 o'clock on Friday and Saturdays and 9 on Monday, um, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So if you want to come in early, um, grab you a drink. Uh, our bar is going to be open. We can get you some appetizers going. And then our kitchen opens um, at 5. And so tonight we have a fish special. It's our red fish. And um, the chef's done a great job fixing that up for the community. So if you want to come in, grab you a book, a glass of wine, and some fish. We've got some really good pairings that will go with that for you. And I love the filled flowers. Oh, yes, they're they favorite. are. They're phenomenal. Um, it's one of those items you just can't go wrong with. Being from the South, everybody likes stuff fried. And so you take a mushroom and you batter it and you deep fry it. It's, it's a little piece of heaven on a plate. But it's not just a deep fried mushroom, it's a well seasoned. Yes, and that's the, the thing. The little secret is part is the seasoning that comes with it. And then our in-house made ranch just really tops it. I mean, it's also really good with our um, house made comeback sauce. And honey mustard. Yes, our house made, all of our sauces are house made. So you get your little touch, You can we can customize it up for you and get it out to you to the table any way you'd like it. My name is Chef Stevens Flag. My specialty is actually game birds. Um, I like to cook Cornish hen, um, let's say squab, duck, anything that's in the game or in the wild that you can cook. Like I love to cook quail. I mean, it's one of my signature dishes. Also, um, but I also like to put a southern flair on every type of food. Really, uh, it's just not a a genre that I can just be put in. That's, that's what I think. We were talking about the field flowers and how seasoned they were. They're one of my favorite things. Field flowers, you know, we wanted to approach the field flower different. Well, the fried mushroom, say some we call it the fried mushroom. Yeah. We call it field flowers because, you know, if you know where mushroom come from, we grow outdoors and it's a fun guy that's, you know, grown in the field. So most people that actually harvest mushroom grow them in the field. So it's called the field flower. So how long have you been cooking and what made you decide to become a chef? I've been cooking I've been cooking for a long time. I've been cooking professionally uh, in the commercial kitchen probably since 16. And what made me want to cook was actually my grandma. You know, uh, it was like a, actually a sign of maturity to be able to, to come into the kitchen, you know, with old women and everything <laughs> that's cooking. So, you know, they always shoot you out the kitchen, but grandma, she was like, Son, you gonna come on in the kitchen and help grandma steep some of these peas and everything. And you know, they just something that just kind of stuck with me. And another thing about cooking is like you put a smile on people's faces. You know, it's it's a, a whole nother aspect of the culinary world or hospitality that a lot of people don't understand. Like putting a smile on a person's face who had a bad day, they come in to get a bite to eat and they turn up ending up happier before they leave the bar, you know, or before they leave their table. You know, and leaving with a real experience or, or a sense of I don't know I don't know what to call it, but a sense of home, you know, out of the dish. So that would actually make some people return because it's so homey. Do you live here in New Albany? No man, I'm actually I actually live like thirty minutes away from here. Just commute every day. No matter the dish, and I really just can't see myself doing anything other than cooking and providing meals for people. Even if it's not a profit involved, I still like to involve myself with the community and feed people. I'll feed a homeless man if I have to. <laughs> do you do community cooking? Yes, ma'am. But it's not in New Albany because I'm just not, I haven't been introduced to the chamber yet, but I 
think once that happens, we can see a lot of community work getting started. And the rain will be probably at the forefront of it. Come down to the rain where we got the best steak in an 80 mile radius. <laughs> How are you? Good. How many books have you? How many book signings have you had? <laughs> Oh, I would guess uh, over 50, uh, maybe 60, somewhere in that range. I haven't had that many books published, though. So, um, I tell people that I may be the most um, unaccomplished author they've ever met because I've written 17 novels and only three of them have been published. So. But I've, had, I've written some nonfiction works and uh, all of them have been published, so I've got a better track record there. Are you a psychiatrist or psychologist? Psychologist. Psychologist. You want to know the difference? Yes, please. Three hundred thousand dollars a year. <laughs> the other way, huh? Yeah. Not your way. Not my way. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your book. Well, a Christian right, neither Christian nor right, takes a look at the ethics of Jesus and compares it to the political agenda of the Christian right or evangelical right and it, it doesn't stack up very well. There's some great contradictions and inconsistencies. And also the Christian right calls itself on the right, but actually it's part of a leftist, uh, historical leftist movement down through the ages. So the theology is leftist, it's individualistic, tends towards anarchy. Well, I mean, look at it this way. Uh, the Christian right, the evangelical Christian right, is really based upon fundamentalism and their number one uh, number one tenet is the uh, unerring scriptures uh, they, they cannot that everything is literally true and they also leave the interpretation up to the individual so there's no centered power there's no center uh, there's no organized center it's, it really kind of flies out so that it tends more towards a theological anarchy than, a kin than something akin to mainstream Christianity, which does have a center. I'm proud of you, Joe. Thank you. I'm Judy Harrison and I'm president of the Union County Master Gardeners and we are working to replenish the large planters in the downtown area getting ready for winter with some plants that will survive the uh, cold weather that's coming up this week. And we try to keep uh, do the replenishment seasonally just to keep downtown beautified. Y'all do a good job. About how long will it take you to do uh, what you're doing today? Uh, well, probably about, we've been down here about two hours. We've already done the ones at the trailhead and across the uh, street at the city hall. And we're working now on the ones in front of UCDA and the courthouse. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Carly Zachary and our store is Anna Jade Boutique. Okay, we have been in business for three and a half years. We moved to Pontotoc in 2016. Downtown has really come alive since we've been here. There were only four stores when we came and now there's like 10, so it's great. October of last year, we bought out a children's boutique and added children's clothing to our store. Most sizes are baby. It's more the baby instead of toddler. My name is Blake Anderson. I have the rack in Pontotoc. We've had it for almost four years. At the rack, uh, we have women's fashion, and we also have a few options for men, including Waters Bluff, and we also hand make a lot of our jewelry here. At the rack, we, ha we hand make a lot of our necklaces, earrings, bracelets. We also carry Sadie handcrafted jewelry. We also have watercolor paintings by a local artist, Katie Chambers. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 10 to 6, and then on Saturday, 10 to 5. My name is Megan Bynum. I own Magnolia Soap and Bath Company in New Albany, Oxford, Tupelo, and we have a small store inside of the rack here in Pontotoc, and we just wanted to encourage everyone to support local, shop local. We, as a family, decided ourselves that that's what we would do. Um, as far as your groceries, clothes, children's clothes, soap, bath products, anything like that, just shop local. I'm Paulette Reese, and it's the gift shop on Main, downtown Pontotoc. I've been in business 42 years this June. Uh, I do a bridal registry, which I have done all those years, and I do all occasion gifts. And um, recently I have uh, opened Simply Noel Boutique, which is ladies' clothing. Just all occasion gifts. <laughs> My name is Whitney Smith. I'm the wife of Mayor Jeff Smith. So we have six new businesses in downtown Ecru in newly renovated buildings. We have some existing businesses that have gone through a number of renovations like uh, Marie's right down here has new windows that look more period. Um, Mindy Spears at Curl Up and Die has gone through a huge renovation. They're open today during open house to showcase their renovations. She now has a masseuse as well as a nail technician. So you can sign up for massages, pedicures, and manicures as well as getting your hair cut. McCoy's is open today where it's typically not open on a Sunday, which is wonderful. So Bruce is welcoming citizens as a long-term business. And Ecru Fish and Steak, which is right here behind us, normally would be closed at 2, but they're staying open until 6. And after 2, they're serving a $5 bowl of soup for the occasion. This is our inaugural open house. I I guess I say inaugural because it's been a number of years due to declining businesses and buildings that ECRO has not had an open house. So this is a very exciting time for all of our businesses. Uh, we have a gym that will be opening December the 1st. It will be a $25 membership and then each family member that would like to join would be an additional $20. That's opening December the 1st. We have a tile place that is instrumental in the new construction across from the North Pontotoc Upper Elementary School. They're providing the materials for the housing and the floors and the concrete and all that good stuff. So future uh, things to do in ECRU, um, we have Breakfast with Santa December the 15th. Um, tickets will be on sale for $5. That provides your breakfast. You bring a canned good to ride the train. Those canned items are then taken to North Pontotoc School where they will be sent home with the children who get the um, reduced or free meals so that they'll have food for their bellies over the holiday season. And we will have our Christmas parade December the 1st, which is a Saturday evening at 7 p.m. It'll be right down Main Street so you can see all the beautiful stores lit up and enjoy the parade. Parking will be available on either side of the street behind the buildings. We're hoping 
to not have parking on the streets because of the danger of a child coming through the cars into the street into the parade area so we're hoping this year we're going to be able to block off the streets and not allow parking since we do have these nice parking lots behind the buildings this year. Well, so far we've just started our registration process and we have about four or five entries, but usually by the night of the parade, we have a very large parade, which has always been a blessing. Registration is available at the town hall. And there's also a PDF file on the town Facebook page. And the funny thing about the parade is before Jeff actually and I lived here, he worked at Ashley and we were coming through one night. And it just so happened that we, we got caught in traffic on parade night. And so we stopped and we got to see the parade. We were not citizens here, but the parade was so phenomenal. And there was free hot chocolate to the citizens, as there always is every year. And we were so overwhelmed by this feeling of home that we started looking for a house in this area and that's actually how we got to be citizens of Ecru and now he's the mayor. Everyone come to Ecru because while we are a small town we have a lot of big things to offer. <laughs> This will be our, one of our clinic rooms here. We've got three clinic rooms and they're fully staffed here uh, with supplies that are donated. Blood pressure cuff and thermometer, all the same kind of stuff that a regular, you know, paid for clinic. And we've been really fortunate to have that kind of donation. And we've got, uh, a small waiting room, but it's enough for the patients that we've got. Um, sometimes we will try to pull patients in and just have them, you know, sit back with us or something if we run out of room. But we usually it's it's just pretty full. Tell us about the cleanup today. So Groundswell um, came from Tupelo, and then we had a youth church group that came and cleaned up the yard, raked. The leaves, put mulch down, painted our sign, cleaned up the cigarette butts and stuff that people have littered with across the lawn for a while and just made it really look nice and was a real blessing. Wonderful. So y'all, what days are you open? We're only open the second Saturday of every month. And to what times? We start at 10, people usually line up for a number around eight and we go as long as we can based on how many providers we have. We ask that everybody register by noon if they want to be seen so that we know how to budget what we've got. So come and come check in by noon. Okay, wonderful. And your name? Charlene Black, director at agapehs.org. Faster than fairies and faster than witches, bridges and houses, hedges and ditches, and charging along like troops in a battle, all through the meadows, the horses and cattle, all of the sights of hill and the plain, flying as thick as a driving rain, and ever again in the wink of an eye, pain of stations whistle by. Here is a child who clambers and scrambles, all by himself and gathering brambles, here is a tramp who stands and gazes, and there is the green for stringing the daisies. Here is a cart run away in the road, lumping along with man and load. 
And here is a mill, and there is a river, each a glimpse, and then gone forever. Mm -hmm.